So I'm doing kind of a Thanksgiving rehearsal <laughs> dinner <laughs> tonight, and I'm trying out some recipes before the big day. I want to make a like a sugar glazed tofu roast, which is a lot like a, a ham, or it's supposed to be. And so I'm pressing the tofu in a flour sack cloth and using cast iron pans which I very carefully place on top so that it's evenly balanced because I don't want the tofu cracking. I'll leave it like this for half an hour and then flip the tofu and do it again for another half an hour and then marinate it. So I'll be back to marinate it in a while. I wanna have a little chat with you though. Have you noticed that some people get very prickly when you tell them that you're a vegetarian or a vegan or that you're just cutting down on meat? <laughs> like, have you stumbled into the carnivores, which is the world of the carnivores, carnivores, where they will go ass over apple cart, or is that cow cart, to tell you, Vegetables, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Animal cruelty or environment aside, we will do the same thing. And we're not doing it over ethics. We're doing it over something much, much deeper. The truth is, people are existentially triggered by other people's eating habits. Especially if those people are part of your community. Even if the community is like four billion big, like the United States. I mean, people can be so evangelical about food. And I have the science, the science behind how we break bread with each other and its impacts on how much we trust each other, are willing to agree with each other, and how it affects hierarchical relationships. For instance, if you eat from the same dish as others, you are more likely to agree with them. And there's less likely to be subservience and dominance. And that, like, this is really good if you are wanting to negotiate a deal. <laughs> Anytime you want collaboration, it's important to think about how you do a meal. So another thing is that people who eat the same foods are also more likely to be agreeable. They're more likely to, to trust each other. And I'll put all those studies down in the description box. No. Maybe your daughter is bringing home a boy or something. If you set it up to where you're eating the same things and hopefully even eating off the same plate, you're gonna create conditions that are going to be favorable for trustworthiness, open communication, and even agreeability. So for instance, she's bringing home a boy. You want them to be home by their curfew. So if you set up the whole environment where you're eating the same foods, eating off the same plate, <laughs> you're gonna make that more likely to happen. I think like going out for Ethiopian food <laughs> would be a great idea because people are eating off the same plate, the same food, everything like that. What you don't wanna do, go to a superstar buffet. <laughs> you don't wanna go to TGI Fridays menus that are ginormous. You don't want that. Or you could have a, a dinner, a family dinner from home. And when you think about, you know, Thanksgiving, and you're hanging out with your relatives and your relatives' friends and whatnot. And you, you tell them, you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm vegetarian. That can upset people. I think it's just such a cultural tradition, Thanksgiving. And part of that is people eating the same foods together. They're breaking the same bread together. But when you decide that you're going to be vegetarian or vegan, well, you're not doing that. And it's perfectly fine, you know, for us to, to, to eat the food that we want to eat, of course. I, like, I know it doesn't make sense, you know, when we're like, it's so crazy that that person is making me so, feel so uncomfortable over my eating choices. I don't know. It just goes down deep. It goes down to like survival level deep. You know what I mean? And you know, you know what you can do when that happens? You can talk about it. You can bring up these studies that I'm, I'm putting in the description below. You can bring up the studies. You can say, hey, 
I learned that when people eat the same foods, they're more likely to be agreeable. Right. There's more likely to be trust amongst the group and, and explain all of that to them. And if you explain that to them, it might make them a little bit aware of why they feel threatened by your food choices. An emotion, you're taking an emotion and you're making it more objective. Does that make sense? Also, I'm gonna let you know that I actually don't really consider myself vegan. I eat a vegan diet and I do it for ethical reasons and environmental reasons. No, 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 no. Let's rewind. I'm a vegetarian for ethical reasons and environmental reasons, but I stick to a vegan diet. Although I do eat honey, I do wear vintage leather, you know, that I thrift or that I just own, that I own for a long time. <laughs> but, but you know, if it's a birthday party or something and there's cake or I'm at a wedding, I'm eating the cake. I'm definitely eating the cake, but I'm not gonna eat the beef. I also really don't like labels. I have a problem with labels. Because I, I just, I don't, I don't even like the idea of like, you know, taking on an identity through group inclusion, like being a vegan or whatever. That, that just doesn't, it's not something that I like. I just, I'm not into that. The fourth reason is that the biggest champions of animal welfare right now are conscientious omnivores. That is people who have chosen to eat less meat. Maybe they've decided to have like, what is it? No meat on Fridays or something like that. They've either chosen to eat less meat or they, or they have committed themselves to conscientiously choosing where their meat comes from. I don't want to make it hard for people to be conscientious omnivores. I don't want them to feel that they have to be a label of vegan or vegetarian. I want it to be as easy, as easy for them as possible. I don't want it to feel like if they slip, that they failed. I don't, I don't want them to be shamed by the vegan community <laughs> because it's not helpful. All that does is make them quit. Just, I want to be about what truly works to solve a problem. So I am going to be making today a vegan, I, it's, it's a, it's kind of like a, a dress rehearsal. It's a rehearsal for a vegan meal. I'm roasting a tofu uh, and it's, it's going to be like a, with a sweet glaze, kind of like a ham style. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the process and tell you, you know, how it goes. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about because I'm going to have people over for Thanksgiving and I'm going to have non-vegans and non-vegetarians over for Thanksgiving, family members, pe family members, people where, you know, who are really looking forward to the turkey on the table. They're going to come over and yes, it's kind of a dilemma. What, what do you do? What do you do when you're vegan or what do you do when you're vegetarian and you're hosting Thanksgiving? I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about what we're doing. Well, and we'll talk about it while we go to the store. Okay. But, um, before I go, I want to marinate my tofu and I'm kind of going off of Issa Chandra's recipe from what is it called? Super fun, super something holiday food. We're just going to go right into this. I need to do a cookbook because I'm working on a blog right now, but, um, the problem with blogs, and I'm not going to do this to you, but the problem with food blogs is like all of that blogging, all the blogging. And you know what that's for? That's for SEO. That's like so they can put all the keywords in so that it ranks high in the Google search. But it's annoying. And then the pop-up ads. And I think even, you know, to be profitable, they have to have a lot of those pop-up ads and I can't, I just, I can't even deal. <laughs> I can't even deal. Um, Issa Chandra, because she's produced a lot of cookbooks and she has her own restaurant in Nebraska. Nebraska, yeah, like the meat capital, the steak capital. But she has her own, her own restaurant in Nebraska. Um, she, she can just have a website. 
She could just have a website without the pop-ups, without the ads, without, you know, the blogging. She, she just does a, you know, a cool picture, very short and sweet. So she had to consult a lot of friends about how to make a, like how, what ham tastes like because she's Jewish and she's never had ham. But, um, and then the recipe is like right there. That's how I want my website to be. Just like that. Clean. I'm going to have to find other ways to make money because I am paying for the website. But, I don't know. That's why it helps if you like and subscribe to my, my videos. And it's like at no cost to you, but it actually helps support me in making these videos and creating that blog and creating a, you know, like a recipe blog with also food related articles, plant based food related articles without all the ads and the, the you know, the really boring blog post <laughs> that you have to scroll down. You know what I really hate? Is that when you go to a food blog and you're like, skip to the recipe, but skip to the recipe. And then it takes you to an ad before you go to the recipe. Oh my God, drives me crazy. I empathize because they should get paid. You know, they're, they're producing free content and they should get paid somehow. And, you know, we all can access it. Yeah, so, so I totally empathize. I get it, but it is annoying. Um, and I don't want to do that. So hopefully you can help me not do that by subscribing and just hitting that bell button so you receive notifications and just kind of like watching the video all the way through. Like, you know, even if you don't watch it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So her cookbook is called Super Fun Times Vegan Holiday Cookbook. Yeah. And I mean, you know, she just look her up, Issa Chandra. She's... She's so fun. I love her. Original anarchist vegan. Love her. Okay, so um, so she's got a marinade. I'm loosely following it based on what I have. I was going to smoke. She uses liquid smoke in her marinade. Put this down. I was going to actually literally smoke the tofu in my uh, in my Weber kettle. My kettle. My Weber kettle grill um but then I thought about it like that's just a lot of setup that's a lot of polluting and I can't really smoke it for very long because it's going to change the texture of the tofu and make it really chewy I'm not going for you know bacon or bacon dog treats <laughs> that's not what I'm going for so I am going to go get the smoke the liquid smoke I'm going to go to but I'm going to start making the marinade right away. Like I'm making a partial marinade. Um, I am making a garlic paste and just putting all the ingredients together. I'll put the ingredients in the description box below. Uh, but I want it to marinate, you know, while I'm away. I want to get as much marinade marination time as possible. I am actually taking a lot of license with Issa Chandra's recipe by using the Marmite and the miso. Um, they're both such great ingredients for for bring, bringing umami to a dish, you know, like a meaty savoriness complexity. And instead of using onion powder or garlic powder, I'm using real garlic and real onion, not because I'm trying to be cooler than everybody else, but that's what I have on hand. <laughs> I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't make it hard on yourself. I'd use the garlic powder and onion powder if you have it. I've also opted to score it before I marinate it because I think that will help the marinade absorb better. And I'm flipping it over and poking it like you would a poke, like a poke cake, hoping that would also help the marinade absorb into it.
was always grappling with this question of what was right and what was wrong. Tried right? to get the Chick-fil-A cauliflower sandwich, you know, that was so controversial that people were banning Chick-fil-A because they had something vegan, but they don't have it either here or they just don't have it. I don't know. I live in a vacuum. I, I probably missed the news. Yeah, I was like, I'm here for the controversial sandwich. <laughs> she didn't know what I thought. We're heading to GameStop to drop off my neighbor's returns. I'm in the drive through of Taco Bell. I'm hungry. I'm gonna get just like a bean burrito. And I, the car in front of me is like wafting pot smoke into my car. I'm gonna have to also tell my husband that I'm at Taco Bell because he won't believe it. And he'll think that someone stole her credit card. Did I just get a bean burrito? That's it. And it's all hot sauce, please. Like the hot sauce. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'm kind of into it. It's really good. Don't you hate when you get lipstick on a burrito, though? <laughs> so this has 365 calories. But it's pretty good. I mean, if you're on the road, why not? Vegan burrito at Taco Bell. Don't try and get a cauliflower thingy at Chick-fil-A. It, it doesn't exist. I guess it was just, I don't, I don't know. I kind of want another burrito. <laughs> I'm going to the pet store right now to get a big bag of dog food. And I don't know, I'm, I'm then I'm going to the store. But there is a beer den. Maybe I'll hang out with the locals and drink some beer. It's so it's time to answer the dreaded question. Will I be serving turkey? The answer is yes. Unfortunately, yes. I really don't want to. I just couldn't think of any other way around it. First of all, my husband wants turkey. It's a tradition. He wants a sense of connection with his family while he is unable to be with them. And he wants a sense of continuance. He eats very little meat and only gets turkey once a year. And he really looks forward to it. And... I can't say no to him. I mean, I can't, literally, because he has just as much right to the food he wants to eat as I do. We also have friends and neighbors coming over who would like to have turkey, too, and I want that sense of community. I know how to prepare a turkey very well. It's a several-day process, and I'm meticulous and sacred about it because it is a precious life, and it comes out really good. That is if you like turkey. <laughs> We get our breast from, we use a turkey breast, we get it from a local farm, and we know the turkey was treated well. We won't serve a lot of turkey, just about 14 pounds, and the dogs will have turkey too, and the bones will be made into a broth for the dogs. Nothing will be wasted. Right, well, let's it at the store. Now I have to go get gas and then I can return to my doggies, which is the only place I ever want to be. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of the same thing. Me giving my dogs meat, me giving my husband turkey. It's the same thing. It really is. I myself will not be eating turkey. I don't even like it. And I will be providing a large amount of plant-based vegan food, including the sweet glazed tofu roast. And I'll also likely make a vegan pozole and the miso gravy, which you will see me making tonight. It's all in the ebb and flow. If I had to, I could go it alone. But I don't ever need to Because I have a home Somewhere to run to I could live alone in the woods Not a single cell But I would never feel alone Because you've become my
step forward follows one step backwards that's what it takes to grow one life left is another that's just starting and that's just the way it goes if i had to i could go alone but i don't ever need to because i have a So while the tofu is roasting, I'm going to prepare the sauce and I will leave a link to the recipe below. It's not my recipe, it's Issa Chandra's. So the idea is that you reduce the glaze until it's very thick and bubbly and then you glaze your roasted tofu with it. You see that little white spot on the tofu? That's where I took a little sample of it. It was good. <laughs> and then you put the tofu back in the oven for about 15 minutes. I actually ended up putting it under the broiler for a few minutes too. I absolutely loved the way it came out and I'm definitely doing this on Thanksgiving. It's not really ham-like, it's just good. <laughs> it's much more softer inside and I love how soft the tofu becomes but it's still caramelized on the outside. But I will be marinating it for two days to get more flavor penetration. Well that's the end of the video today. I had so much fun hanging out with you today and I really really appreciate you joining me. I'll see you in my next video and also I'm going to start going live on Thursday evenings at about 8 o'clock Eastern time so hope to see you there.